What's going on guys, Ali and Adam coming to you guys with another tutorial Thursday. Today we're going to be talking about Smart Disable, a feature that you might be familiar with in FL Studio. It's been around for a while and if you're not familiar with Smart Disable, Smart Disable is a feature that will turn off the processing power for any given VST. So say you have uh, a reverb plugin that's not working anymore, it can turn it off and that will spare some CPU power and reduce um, crackling or performance issues. Now, today I wanna to talk about how to use Smart Disable, but also why you might not want to use Smart Disable and reasons why you might not want to. And um, once you guys take a look at the project and hear everything, you'll get an idea of what I'm talking about. So let's jump right in. All right, so by default, Smart Disable is on, but it doesn't mean that it's always working. Smart Disable is on, but it has to be toggled on. So in order to make sure that Smart Disable is on, go to Options, Audio Settings, and you'll see this here. Now, I don't use Smart Disable. I have enough processing power. I usually don't need it. Um, if you have like a lower end system or a laptop or something, you might want to use it. So you want that on. Next step is once your project actually has some VSTs loaded up, some EQs, reverb, stuff like that, go to tools, macros, and you go to this switch smart disable for all plugins, which basically turns it on for all your VST. As you add more VST, you might want to check this again to make sure that it adds them again and it keeps adding them. Um, and if you want to disable this feature, if you're not liking it, you're going to have to go back and disable that just there. Um, alternatively, you can also open up an individual plugin. And at the top left, you'll see you can turn it on there, Smart Disable. Right now, it's off. So even though Smart Disable feature is available, it's off for this plugin. But if we see here, let's go ahead and switch it on and you can see now it has taken effect. So we'll turn it off for now. So I wanna show you guys why you might not want to use it because we talked a lot about why you would want to use it, spare CPU power, get more performance available for your project. Now let's say you have, and I noticed this in old, project, um, in old projects, let's say you have a really long reverb, like a 20 second, 15 second, and you are you don't want that turning off, right? Smart Disable might turn off some of your extremely long decay reverbs. Um, it might even you know, do it for other plugins too, maybe delays. So I'm gonna play this uh, reverb with Smart Disable off. It's on a uh, just a simple vocal. Let's leave it um, off and play it back so you can see what I'm talking about. <laughs> So you can see there, the uh, reverb just kept playing back. It didn't stop. Now, watch uh, when I switch it on, what's gonna happen. So Smart Disable is on. Let's detach this so we can see the reverb plugin. Smart Disable is on. Let's play it back. And there we have it. It didn't even get past four bars. It disabled it. So this might be a reason why you don't want to use Smart Disable. So ultimately, it's really up to you. Um, if you have so many VSTs and you see a use to use um, Smart Disable, go ahead and use it. But this, I just wanted to get out there because you might be in a situation where you start using Smart Disable and you're like, what's going on with my reverb? Why is it turning off? And if that's happening, it's because of Smart Disable, which you're gonna want to either Turn off individually in each of the plugins. If, if there's specific plugins, you want to turn that off. Or of course, you can turn it off completely in the options audio settings. So um, it's a cool feature. You can definitely squeeze out more performance out of it, but you do want to use it with some caution, especially when you're doing stuff like this. Long reverb trails, long delay, and you can see it didn't even last past four bars. So 
I hope this video can give you guys some insight for FL Studio users who are using Smart Disable. Again, I don't use it, but Smart Disable is definitely beneficial for some lower end CPUs to squeeze out more performance. So if you guys like these tips, you enjoyed this, be sure to drop a like, leave a comment, let me know what kind of tutorials you guys wanna see in the future and stay subscribed as always and I'll see you guys in the next video. Take it easy.